Hi guys, this is Madeline with Madeline Diet Designs and welcome back to my channel. Today I am here to do a quick tutorial with you guys. In my last video, I showed you that um, Joanne had their Park Lane Holiday paper pads 70% off and I um, love this one particularly because it's winter themed not just holiday themed and so I was inspired to make some winter themed paper bag journals with this six by eight paper pad and so I'll do a quick flip through of the few I have made so far All right. And they're just very simple, have not a lot of pages in them, just great as a gift, great for your handbag, you know, a good, um, there we go. And I made a little bit of, of ephemera for them, but if this doesn't get too long, maybe we'll make some more today. But I did this one here. Uh, yesterday and actually funny story about this one I thought I was filming the tutorial on this one and oh guess what no nope, was not so <laughs> here we go we're gonna try this a second time but anyway um, just a cute love it cute little happy I think these are awesome and they also really bring me back to my days when I was starting out because I made tons of these and really really enjoyed it all right so let's get started with the tutorial the first thing you're going to need is a paper lunch bag i got these at the dollar tree a huge bag of them and these measure let's see these measure about 11 by five or so and you're gonna take your paper bag, and I, for this one, I fold in half. There are student tutorials out there for um, a trifold paper bag journal, but this one, um, we are going to do fold in half, okay? So here's your base, here's your skeleton of your journal, all right? And then I went through my papers already, and I've done two pretty neutral ones, so I went through and chose some more green toned papers I wanted to use, and um, I'm going to cut one down to size with you and tell you the sizes that you're going to need. So, this measures, these pages work if they're five inches across by four and three fourths tall. Okay, so I am just going to, and you have to be careful with these, the ones that are directional. So I'm going to do five and three fourths. Save your scraps, of course, always. By five across. All right, and now you have cut your six by eight cardstock down to the size you need. So let's go ahead and start to put this paper bag junk journal together. So I'm going to do this one here on the front cover. So of course, as always, I have my ink here. And I'm going to start out by just inking up the edges. Again, you never have to ink up the edges. Um, it's totally optional, but I just like doing it because I just like the contrast and the dimension it gives. Also, off to the side, I have my old magazine, which I use as my glue book. And I use this primarily just to make sure that I have a good coating of glue on the back of my piece of cardstock. And so we're gonna make sure we got all that glue getting on there. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and just center it on our cover as best we can. And I have my bone folder and we're gonna go ahead and just give this a good press and press this down. Now, you can always go back later 
and add a little bit of glue here and there if you don't like the way it's, um, you know, if you miss a spot or whatever. I just like the glue stick with this because it's not too wet and, um, you know, it really gives a good even adhesion, okay? So on the back, I'm gonna flip over to the back. Oh, and also, I don't think I mentioned this, but I have the bottom of the lunch sack in the front, okay? And I'll show you guys why in just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and do this piece for my back cover. So here we go with the inking. So are you guys ready for Christmas? <laughs> is anybody ever really ready for Christmas? I mean, that is honestly uh, the question. <laughs> um, I feel like I've gotten my uh, shopping done for the most part. Um, I've got two kids and I might pick up a few things here and there for my teenagers, which, you know, the older they get, they're not quite as fun to shop for, but, you know, nevertheless, we're going to still, you know, make some fun things happen. I actually tend to, and this is really kind of funny because my mom did this and I still love it to this day, but she would do like razors and deodorant and like, things we needed in our stockings, which I love. And so I've always done that with my kids, like toothbrushes and, you know, things of that nature. Um, my son really likes this soap. It's all natural. It's called Dr. Squash, I think. I'll get him some of his soap. And um, so anyway, I've gotten all that stuff purchased. And then, you know, I'm that mom that always loves to, uh, you know, wrap up underwear <laughs> under the tree and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, just stuff that, stuff they need, you know, why not? I think I'm gonna take this one and use it on the inside there. So I'm just gonna ink it up. And also, um, they have their favorite candies they like, and so I usually get some of that for their stockings and, you know, just try to make it fun. You know, just opening gifts, not necessarily, you know, the biggest things inside them, but, you know, just the fun of wrapping gifts, opening gifts, having them under the tree, you know, and just being together. You know, that's my favorite part of Christmas, honestly. Um, all of our family lives in the same state as we do, but several hours away in either direction. So um, we see them all usually before or just after the actual holiday, but um, we are always at home on Christmas. Um, we go to church and kind of have our routine that we do on Christmas Eve. I'm gonna put a pin in that for a minute. You guys can see this paper bag is not perfect. You know, it's folded a little bit wonky. It's okay, we're going with it. It is all right. Okay, let me get a little extra glue on this corner. So yeah, my kids always have their um, stockings hung, you know, at the same place, which I think is really, really nice. Okay, so put a pin in that again. We have got our back cover, our inside back, and our front cover all finished. So now over here, what I like to do is pull out some of my leftovers, some of my scraps from when I was cutting, and pick out what I would like to go on. You don't need the full five inch piece to go here it's just something a little bit smaller, you know, because we're going to create a little tuck pocket right there. So, I really like that piece there. And let's see what other scraps I have. You know, maybe I do want to put that there instead. I don't know, that's not really directional. Hmm. All right, you guys. What am I going to do? Okay, we're going to go back and we are going to actually hold and keep that there. Okay, so let me go ahead and get some inking. He 
here. Okay, and let me go over to my blue book and turn the page and go ahead and get my glue on. And then we'll figure out what we're going to cover that um, bottom flap of the paper bag with in just a second. Okay. Here we go. And I really just kind of like to center this here just a little bit from, you know, the, the um, crease, the spine of your, the center of your journal there. Okay, and we're just going to get that good press. Get that good and press down. Okay. And you know what? I think I'm going to trim this down and just use the same plaid here. Yes, I like that. I'm going to go with it. <clears throat> so that is about three inches there. That's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and trim my paper, save your scraps, to three inches. And that looks good. And it's a little tall, so let me take a little bit off the top. Okay. Nice. Okay, great. So anyway, after we have gone and visited family and seen everybody, um, I just love to be at home with my kids on Christmas Eve. We go to mass together and then our little holiday um, Christmas Eve dinner is always, we love Indian food. <laughs> and so we always go eat Indian food on um Christmas Eve, which is super fun, and um, my daughter, even though she's in seventh grade, loves to make reindeer food because she learned how to make it in uh, preschool, and it's really cute. I mean, if you guys have kids or grandkids, I mean, it's a really fun activity to do with, um, you know, kids this time of year, and basically, all it is is uncooked oatmeal. So you take your uncooked oatmeal and you mix it with, I think the original recipe calls for glitter, but I just use um, sprinkles because I don't like to put the glitter in the grass. You know, sprinkles will biodegrade or whatever. And, um, you know, it's fine. Madeline, it's a little crooked, but you know what? It's going to be okay. We're just going to hold. We're going to leave it. Okay. And then I already had this trim to make a little belly band right here. So I'm going to ease this up. So anyway, back to the reindeer food recipe. It is uncooked oats, colored sprinkles. We use red and green usually, and then um, regular like crystal sugar. And the whole idea behind it is it helps the reflection, the shininess of it helps uh, the reindeer find your house to land. So Santa will make it to your house. And then the reindeer have a little snack outside while Santa goes inside and does his work. Okay, guys, let's see if I can get my glue to unclog. Let's try this again. Um, I switched to my art glitter glue just for this detail work of gluing this down right here. Okay. I'm just going to put this here. We have a little belly band on the inside cover. Okay, which I love. And then at this time, since I already have my art glitter glue out, I'm going to glue down here and here. Put a little glue there just to make um, our little tuck right here. So let me do that. Okay, here we go. Beautiful. All right, let me get my top on my glue. Come on, Madeline. Okay, there we go. So we would just scoop out the ingredients and just make a little baggie of reindeer food and 
um, you know, she'll go on the front lawn and sprinkle the reindeer food out. And then, of course, we have the cookies for Santa and the carrot inside and all of that. And the eggnog for Santa. We do eggnog. And anyway, it's just super fun. Okay, so now I want to decorate the cover a little bit here. So I think I'm going to grab a piece of fabric. I just grabbed some scrap, you know, ribbons of fabric. And I wanna put a little bit of fabric on the spine just to reinforce the spine. And also I like the way it looks. So, you know, again, not a lot of really involved <laughs> measuring going on here because this is an imperfect, perfect project. And okay, I like that. So let me grab glue stick. And I do like to use a little bit of a stronger glue stick on this part because it is the spine. And I like to use glue stick too because it really just, you know, creates a really nice look, especially if you're using a paler fabric like I am. So I'm just gonna put this on here and give it a good press like that. All right, and then I'm gonna flip over to the back. And I am going to give this a good press over like this. And you can see it's not completely even in the front and the back. It's okay, don't worry about it. I think that looks super nice. Yay, okay. And I'm actually gonna go, go back here and trim a little bit more off the ends. All right, okay, perfect. And then I'll probably go back a little later and just, you know, pull some threads here and fray that up after, you know, it's gotten a chance to dry. Okay, great. So now, um, as you know, the haul, if you saw the haul, I also purchased the stickers, the ephemera kit and the larger pad. So we have some stickers here. We have some ephemera and some cutouts from the larger pad of the same design. And so what I really want to do now is just pull some things and start to decorate the cover. So I'm just going to go through here and just some things that sort of, you know, catch my eye. Ooh, these are pretty. Okay, love those. I'm just gonna pull some stuff out to work with. I do like that as well. Okay, let's see if we can make some of this stuff work out here. I do, I really, really love that. I love that it says winter. You know, maybe we can do something a little bit, I don't know, like frame it somehow with these. I don't know. I've also gone through, guys, and pulled just some other scraps, you know, uh, some fibers, some, um, I have a little, I actually, this is gauze, actually, I use. It works great, and um, I've got some tool here, and I also have um, this twine. This is like a jute trim. I think it's supposed to be flowers, but y'all... That looks like a snowflake to me. Tell me, you know, comment down below. Tell me what you think. So, um, we may do a little bit of something here on the spine as a decoration. I also have a little bit of lace over here and some other ribbons. And, you know, I like to go through when I'm starting a project like this and um, pull just a few things and have, you know, them just to the side, just a few things. I actually kind of like this lace. Okay, let's trim some of this. Because to me, if, you know, I'm sure like most of you out there, I have a huge craft room full of all kinds of stuff. And honestly, it gets to be very, very overwhelming, you know, for me to start looking through all my stuff. So whenever I start a project, I go through and just pre-pull some items that I know are gonna coordinate well with whatever you know, I'm working with. And, um, you know, I think that looks kind of pretty. So I'm actually gonna kind of rough up this edge a little bit because I do like that look and tear it. All right. And this is just some vintage seam binding and it's lace seam binding, but 
Yeah, love that. Ooh, I really am loving that. Okay, so I'm actually going to go ahead with a little of my glue stick. And again, we can always go back later with our, our glitter glue if anything doesn't adhere properly, you know, and give it a little extra. But um, we are going to start out with our glue stick. See if that'll hold it. Yeah, I love that. That looks, that's looking super cute. Okay. I'm going to trim off this here and hang on to it because we may want to use it in our collaging that we're going to do over here on the rest of the cover. Let me get a little bit glue here. Okay, great. All right. Very cute. Okay, loving where this is going. All right, so move this out of the way. Let's see what we want to do as far as the cover. Okay, so I am going to use these pieces. I'm going to go ahead, like always, like I do, and just ink them up. Sometimes for me, when I ink up my pieces I want to use, it helps me decide where you know, I want to place other, you know, items like ribbons and whatnot. Um, and that, see, that just, I mean, that looks so different to me. I don't know if it does to y'all or not, but I just think it really adds a lot to your projects. Okay, great. And I love that it says winter. So maybe we'll just do something like that. And let me see here. I've got this. See, maybe we could layer a little under. Oh, now I am kind of liking that. Okay, let's see. Let me trim this down just a little bit. Sorry, I think I just bumped you guys. All right, let me give this another trim. To be perfectly honest with you, I think this is a piece of um, deco mesh like you would make a wreath with, but obviously it's jute or a jute like kind of fiber. It's not actually the deco mesh but okay that is cute under that I do like it okay so we're just gonna go with it I'm gonna go ahead and glue that down so for this I'm just gonna kind of guesstimate where my glue is gonna go and just give it a little bit of glue right here the great thing about this glue is it dries clear so you know if you get somewhere you don't want it particularly, it's going to dry clear and not be a huge, you know, problem. It's not going to ruin what you're working on or anything. Okay, let's see if we can get this to flatten out and stick. Yep, I swear this art glitter glue is just the best. Okay. Okay. And then I am wanting to put that in the middle and it's going to give a little bit of lift to this, having that underneath it, but I kind of like that. So here we go with this. All right. Nice. Okay. I'm just going to hold that for a second. Okay. Okay, cute. Now, I am wanting to bring a little bit of the lace in. So, maybe we can do a little bit of lace and just kind of layer this piece up, you know, kind of to the side a little bit. Or, you know, I don't know now. Now that that is like this, kind of lift it a little bit. Let's see what I want to do here. Maybe just like this a little bit. Okay, all right, that's looking okay. Now I could always do, I don't think I'm gonna use the tool, but I could always go use some of this. Um, you know, this is obviously meant to be like cheesecloth, which is what a lot of people use, but I mean, I just found, which I don't think cheesecloth is very expensive, but I just found gauze pieces at the Dollar Tree, and they just 
I mean, they work just fine for me. Okay, so you know what? Maybe we will do something like this. Ooh, that's kind of cute. I am kind of liking that. Okay, that's cute. And then I could still actually put... Okay, yeah. Okay, we're just going to go with it. We're going to go with it. And we are not, not going to overthink, are we? No, we are not. We are making art and we are being creative. Okay. There we go. I like it kind of on there messily. And I am going to put this piece of lace right here at the top. I do like that. Okay. And then let's see how this is going to go. Okay. All right. I am liking that. Especially after all this glue dries. I think that is going to look really nice. Okay. Cute. Okay. Y'all cute. Love it. I wasn't really sure how that was going to turn out when I started, but now I am loving it. Okay. All right. Awesome. So, I mean, do we even want to do this one down here? I'm not even sure that we need it, except for actually that, you know, that could be fun poking out from the bottom. That could be cute. Okay, let me grab a little bit more of my, my faux cheesecloth. <laughs> All right, and here we go. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. All right. Okay, just a little bit right here. I still wanna be able to see the winter because I do like that. And actually, I have this left over from when I did the spine and Let's see, you know, I really don't like that because it's too close, but this I do like. So I am, I'm gonna go ahead and go with it. We're doing it, here we go. Oops, y'all, I just dropped that. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, let me get the glue off this. We may need this later on when we make our ephemera. Okay, let me clean up my workspace a little bit here. Okay, cute, cute, cute. All right, I am really liking where this is going. Okay, super cute. Love this. Love it, love it. I love it. It looks like it's got some dimension. It's got lots of different kinds of fibers. Yeah. Okay. What do y'all think? You like it? Okay. So now that we have finished that part, I have gone ahead already and made my signature. Okay. And it is one, two, three, four pages in an envelope in the middle because I really do love an envelope in the middle of a journal. This is wallpaper. I love, if you've seen any of the videos, you know how much I love crafting with wallpaper. Um, also, I sell wallpaper in my shop. Um, I just think it gives, I just, I love it. I love it. Okay. So, let's take this. And I know our cover's still drying, so we are going to carefully open up our journal and place this on the inside. And then I actually have an entire um, little box. I think it's an old sunglasses box where I have my um, binding kit. So I'm gonna take a paper clip and hold all this together here. And then I'm gonna take another paper clip and hold this together here. Okay, because this is still drying. So we're gonna be very careful. All right, and then I am going to poke some holes. So let me grab my, I just have an old mailer stuffed with 
bags, old, um, you know, foam and bags and stuff. And I use that to poke my holes. So I'm going to get my pokey tool. And when I'm doing a one signature journal, y'all, I just eyeball it. I go in the middle and do a hole. And then I go up and do a hole like this. And then I go down here and do a hole like that. Really no science involved. And having this underneath it for me really helps stabilize where you're poking your holes. And so it's easier just to kind of eyeball it in my opinion. I've got some white wax linen thread. So we're gonna count off three. Okay, like that. Give that a trim. All right. And now we're gonna grab our, our needle out of our kit like this. And we're gonna thread our needle and do a three hole pamphlet stitch, which I know I'm going a little quick on this, but there are a lot of tutorials on how to do a three hole pamphlet stitch if you are interested. But we're gonna go in the middle, okay? Pull it through. We're gonna go down here in this bottom hole, like so. All right. And we are going to pull it through. Whoops, okay. We're gonna pull it through. And then we're gonna go to the top hole on the inside like this and put it through. And then we are gonna go back in our center hole. And this is where it can get a little bit tricky because you do not want to go through the wax linen thread that's already in the middle because um, that sometimes will cause it to be very difficult to um, pull your thread tight. Oh my goodness. Okay. We are gonna troubleshoot together. My needle came <laughs> unthreaded. Okay, here we go through the middle. Okay, good. Let's see if we can get the tail through this time, Madeline. There we go, perfect. Okay. I'm gonna take my paper clips off, put this to the side, and you wanna have one end of each of your threads on either side of this middle piece here. And then I just give it two good knots like that, and I'm going to trim it because now I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna glue this envelope shut and what I have done here by doing that is created a, um, a good little pocket, a top loading pocket here in the middle. All right, let's give this a good press and all right, let's see what we have. We have got our cover, we've got our spine, all right, we have a pocket here, we have a tuck spot here, and we have got some pages. Okay, cute. This is looking very, very cute. I do like it. Oh, and this is something else, which I probably should have done a little earlier, but that's okay. I like to go through and do some inking up of my edges like this. So we will just quickly give this a good ink. A little in that middle. And I'll go to the back. Oh, and I forgot to mention paper bag. You've got a built-in thumb hole right there, which is great. And this really nice large pocket in the back, which is great. I mean, you could put receipts in there, all kinds of stuff. I mean, this is just a handy little thing to have in your purse. All right. So at this point, I am gonna go through and I have some pockets that I need to glue down. So here we go, we're gonna glue down our pockets. Give this a little bit more glue here. All right. Nice. And then um, that's glued down already. And this, I can't decide if I want to leave it as a tuck or a flip. I think I'm going to do a tuck. 
So let me glue it down. I think it's always nice to have lots of pockets. So, all right, here we go. All right, and then now we are going to glue this down here. Okay, great. So let's see, has this video gotten too long? You know what, y'all? I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video here and I will do one more where we make some ephemera and decorate this guy. So um, thanks for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.